Before we move on to actually creating new data from our Flutter app in our Firestore database and updating it and deleting it, having all of our CRUD operations, let's take a look at an alternative pattern to getting data, to making a request for documents and collections, and displaying that in our UI. So first of all, let's take our example, our get users example, or get user by ID example, and see how to display the snapshot data within our page. So what we'd likely do for get users, since we're resolving the data right here, is instead of printing all of the data to the console, we would instead put it within our state and then display that in our UI. So for get users, where we're getting our documents, and we can remove this where query, what we'd likely do is instead of iterating over our documents here, we would put snapshot.documents in state. So let's create a piece of user state. Let's say list, let's say of type dynamic. That's called users, and by default, we'll make that an empty list. So now when we get our user data, we're going to set state and we'll set users to snapshot.documents. So that enables us to go into our body and let's say we have a container that has a child within it, a list view that has a list of children. And here we could assign to children our users and we could iterate over them with map because map returns can return a list if we chain on at the end to list. And we could just say, for each piece of user data, just return it, and then at the end, convert it to a list. But since we know that each piece of user data consists of a map, we might want to select from it, say, the username string from the map. So that would require from user selecting with brackets the username key and we'd need to wrap that username in a text widget since obviously we want to display widgets on our page not just it wouldn't work to just return the username text so let's give this a shot let's save timeline and might need to navigate away and then back to it and now we have our list of users or at least their usernames so this is one approach to displaying our data in our ui but we see that there's a lot of steps that we had to include here. We had to add this get users function that we ran when we initialized our state. We put the documents from the snapshot in state as users, as this list, and then we had to apply this logic directly within our build function in order to display all the data that we wanted to show up. Fortunately, Flutter's given us an alternative way to do this to kind of cut down on providing so much business logic with our in our widgets that we want to display that data in, we can combine everything and combine our logic for displaying our data as well as fetching it within a single widget. And that's made available with the help of the future builder. So directly on the body, we're going to create a future builder widget. And future builder accepts two arguments. First of all, a future, meaning the request that we want to make. So that will be users ref dot get documents. We don't have to include the await. We just need to provide a future that it needs to resolve. And we know that when this is resolved, we're going to get a query snapshot. So we can add that type, that return type to our future builder if we like. And then it's going to accept a builder, which is a function that determines how we're going to display the snapshot data that is resolved from this future. So we'll add that function. And in the parameters, when the future is resolved, we're going to get two values. We're going to get first context. We can use context if we need it. And the second is our snapshot. Now using snapshot here is going to be a bit different than the snapshot that we got within get users. It's going to have different properties available on it. So for example, it's going to have a property on it called has data. So if we say if snapshot dot has data in this case our future is resolved and we can display the data in the way that we want directly within our UI 
So what we're first going to do is we're going to check to see if we don't have any data, if not snapshot.has data, then we want to tell our user that we're in a loading state, we're still fetching our data. So here likely we would return our circular progress. This is how we'll use that circular progress, make sure to import progress, and then we can provide an else. We don't have to include an else because we're returning if this conditional is met. If we do have data, then we'll be able to return our data, display it in the UI in the manner that we like. So again, we can provide our container, which we'll have within it as its child, a list view to display our list of data. But how are we going to get our data here when our future is resolved? Our data is going to be made available on snapshot.data. And remember that when get documents resolves, we get a documents property, a documents list, and we can do with that what we like. So we can map over it once again, we can get each document and from it, say we want to get the username again, we can return that within a text widget, make sure at the end to convert this to a list with the to list method, and we can put this in a final variable called children which will be a list itself of type string, or it'll be a list of type text since we're using a text widget. And for the children list argument of list view, we can set that to our children variable. So now when we save timeline, if we navigate back, we get the same result. So this is the benefit of using the future builder. We can resolve our future, get our data, and apply the logic that we need directly within our build function instead of having to separate it in different parts of our state class. So now we can get rid of get users and calling it within init state and creating a state variable for it. And be aware that you can use this future builder in stateless as well as stateful widgets. So obviously our previous pattern couldn't be used within a stateless widget because we are storing our resolved data within state. So this future builder is going to resolve our future whenever, this, whenever the build function is run. But what if we want to get data in real time? Say we want to get every user document that's added to our user's ref whenever it's added. To be able to get live data, we need to modify this future builder just a bit. Instead, we need to use what's known as a stream builder. So we can still apply all the same logic as we did before here, but the difference is that instead of resolving a future, we're going to have a stream. So how do we get a stream of documents from a collection reference? Well, we just need to change get documents to snapshots. That will return a stream of type query snapshot. And instead of having a future argument here, this is going to be for a stream builder, a stream. So when we save our timeline page, if we navigate back to it, we still get our users. But watch what happens when we add a new user to our collection. So we'll go back to users in our Firestore interface, and we'll add a new document. We'll auto ID it, give our new user some username, an is admin value, and a post count integer. So when we save, we'll take a look at our simulator and we see immediately that new user is added to the top of our list. So these two widgets that I've introduced to you should really change how you think about fetching data from our Firestore database. Although at times we'll need to use the pattern I showed you previously where we fetch data when we initialize state and put that data in state to be displayed in our UI, these stream builders and future builders really combine all the steps that we've used previously within a single widget and if used properly can really help cut down on our code and as we just saw give us functionality that enables us to have data displayed and updated in our app in real time with the use of streams.